What about last night? The Lake Show. They showed up, putting up their most points scored in a season opener, gentlemen, since 91. Defeating Houston 121-14, Jordan Clarkson had a team high 25 points off the bench. The number two overall pick in this year's draft, Brandon Ingram, had nine points in his NBA debut. Max, are you buying the Lakers post-Kobe? I am. Really? And by the way, let me let me just say, you want to compare uh, the Lakers' record in the, let's say, the last three seasons of Kobe's career to what it's going to be this season and the next two? I guarantee you they will win more games now. The Lakers did something smart. What they did, Stephen A., is they had an aging superstar who was coming off a catastrophic injury in Kobe Bryant and couldn't play anymore, really. I mean, a game here and there, but otherwise. And, he, and all the fans wanted to see him, and he needed the ball. So what they did is they hired Byron Scott, unfortunately for Byron, basically to be a babysitter for Kobe, and they let Kobe play out the string and shoot as much as he wanted and do whatever he wanted. Legendary superstar, and the Yankees did the baseball version with Derek Jeter. It happens from time to time. But the upside was they got to draft really high, even though they had traded a pick that was only top five protected and top three protected. They got to draft Brandon Ingram, D'Angelo Russell, to go with Julius Randle. They stole Jordan Clarkson in the second round. And they got a really good nucleus. They took D'Angelo Russell when people like you were calling for them to take Okafor. In a league where the back-to-the-basket post guy who can't close out on the three-point shooter switch on defense and everything doesn't have nearly the value he used to have. They took a guy in D'Angelo Russell while he's limited in certain ways athletically, supposedly, even though he has a 39-inch vertical. This guy is, his passing in the pick and roll as a rookie was already better than the majority of veteran point guards, which is a skill you really need in this NBA. He shoots the three well off the bat and will only get better. They took a really, really good point guard for this modern NBA system and have surrounded him with elite draft talent that was the result of signing Kobe to that contract. So they, so they won on all fronts. They gave the fans what they want. They gave Kobe what they want. They let him exit the way they wanted. Then when that era is over, they bring in the coach they actually want in Luke Walton. And they're now going to run a modern NBA system with the pieces they need to run it. The future's bright for the Lakers. Well, first of all, I think you're giving them too much credit because a lot of it was by accident. And I don't even have time to go into the accident that the Lakers have been over recent memory. But I have and I will on national TV make a declaration. Um, out of respect for the great Jerry West, um, out of respect for a lot of people that I know that are diehard Laker followers, they're my friends, some within the organization, some outside the organization. I've turned over a new leaf. Really? I'm not going to excoriate and vilify Jim Buss on a regular basis. Regardless of the respect I don't have for him, regardless of the, of the job I think he has done on too many occasions, remember, Max Kellerman, when I've gotten on Jim Buss, unlike critics who have questioned his basketball acumen, I have never questioned that. I've never said Jim Buss doesn't know what he's doing. What I've said is that, and what I've excoriated him for, was allowing his, emotion, his emotions to get in the, in the way of his basketball judgment. Because you're concerned with who your sister's dating. Because you can't stand the coach. Because you think or knew your father didn't like somebody or whatever the case may be. You made decisions that got in the way of this organization moving progressively forward. That was my issue with him, not his basketball acumen or supposed lack thereof. No, it was letting his emotions get in the way of his judgment. But I have promised people that I love dearly that I'm going to be nicer to Jim Buss. So that's here I news. You used to come on my radio that's show right. that's like right. every couple that's of weeks. Right. It's big and, news. And I like the, the new you, it's Stephen big, it's, it's big news. I'm going to be nice to Good. Jim Buss from now on. Having said that, let me say this. When we look at the Los Angeles Lakers, I'm not going to get excited because they played the Houston Rockets. Mike D'Antoni, here we go again. Former Laker coach who was brought in by Jim Buss, who backdoored Phil Jackson in the middle of the night and brought that Mike D'Antoni in. Again, I'm going to be nice. I'm not going to go there. What I will say to you is this. This same guy, in terms of looking at the Houston Rockets, what happened here, Max Kellerman? You gave up 120 points. Your first game, your first game as coach of the Houston Rockets, you surrender 120 points. Let me read out some of these names. And I mean no disrespect because I'm fond of all of these kids and I think they have promise. 
But can you tell me whether it's Jordan Clarkson, who came off the bench, by the way, and I think that's a brilliant move by Luke Walton to bring him off the bench. He dropped 25 last night. Lou Williams, who can play. We know these guys can play. Nice contract they we, signed Lou Williams. That's right. Not a right. seven million not, a year. Not bad. Not bad. Clarkson in the second but, round. Listen to this. Julius Randle, D'Angelo Russell, New Al, Lou Al Dang, Swaggy P, and Timothy Moskov is your starting five. And you give up 120 points? 120. See, Sounds this is about a, right this, for that this unit is, right this now. This is why. Well, against the fast tell pace. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Antonio's team played a fast pace? Yes, they do play a fast pace, but I'm telling you, because I like him as a person. D'Antoni's a good man, and he's really, really smart. Mike Antoni. Mike, Mike Antoni. No D. Listen, listen, it, it, listen, I'm telling you, NBA coaches all over the league have been lamenting for years. I want to get into the Lakers for a second. Defense, I want to get into the Lakers. I want to get into the Lakers That's for a second. That's where I'm at with this, Mac. I have a lot of respect for the late great Dr. Jerry Buss. Yes. I think he's the greatest owner in the history of American team sports. I don't think it's close. When he took over the Lakers, the Celtics were by far the greatest franchise in history. They had 13 championships. Lakers were second with six. I'm partial to the late George Steinbrenner, but go ahead. He, he, by the way, I'm the biggest Yankee fan in the world. The answer is Dr. Buss. Dr. Jerry Buss, by the time he passed, the Lakers had the second most championships in history by one. They basically have caught the Celtics, and they're killing them, trouncing them, destroying them and every other franchise in the modern era with 10. Post-shot clock, merger, whatever you want to define the modern era as, the Lakers have absolutely owned it. And the last thing that Dr. Buss did, I think almost as a, as a legacy move, was he left a structure in place for the team where uh, Jim Buss was going to be the head of basketball and Jeannie Buss, really the team boss. She's, she's the one who shows up at the owner meetings. She's the head of business. And I think he did that for a reason. I think he wanted to make sure, I have a lot of admiration for the family, that he wanted to keep the family together, that he wanted to make sure the children had to work together in order, to have, in order for the Lakers franchise to have success. Didn't happen at first. When they pulled off that Chris Paul heist, which was a heist that Jim Buss and Mitch Kupchak deserve amazing credit for, Jeannie Buss was at the owners' meeting. She could gauge that these owners were not happy with the way things were going, and the lack of communication between her and Jim resulted in, in, in a sense of, in effect, that trade was rescinded. The lack of communication between the siblings and I believe over time, now that Kobe's gone, now that that's not an issue anymore, the communication will get better. And right. as that happens, the Lakers will also get better. But I you, think the future well, is on. bright. I let you go. You can believe what you want. I'm giving you facts in terms of what happened. You just dropped a lot of facts, and I appreciate that. But let's understand the context in which it was given. You knew that the league was def def were, were the de facto owners of the New Orleans Hornets at the time. So the chances of the Chris Paul trade going through was slim to none because Dan Gilbert, fresh off LeBron exiting from Miami and the maelstrom of cynicism and beyond that ultimately that was going to provoke, that wasn't the time. What I mean by that is this. When you acquire Chris Paul, you don't acquire Chris Paul and save $20 million in cap space. Go back and read Dan Gilbert's letter to the league. You're but, arguing they made too no, good a deal. No, 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 no. That Jim made too good a deal. Let me tell you why. Exactly. Exactly. But let me tell you why that's relevant. Because you wouldn't make it with a foolish owner. The league were the de facto owners that had an obligation to look out for the league, not just the team. You have to know that if you Mitch Kupchak and Jim Buss and Jeannie Buss and them. And the fact that they weren't communicating well enough, which means they couldn't read the tea leaves, it compromised them. So you're saying, oh, now we're going to move forward and better times are ahead. I'm saying there was never a reason for the bad times to exist Think and get in the point. way of the basketball Think decision. The point they, you're making. They, they messed up for years and put this in. You were working radio in Los Angeles, which is why I let you go on with that. Come on now. You in L.A. How miserable were your times in L.A. talking about the Lakers? You gonna sit up there and mess up this franchise for years Only and years and years. Only if they would have taken Oprah Because, because of Russell. your personal feelings. Because of your personal feelings. That's inexcusable, man. You don't put a city through what the Lakers think put them through what just you're because saying. your siblings don't get along with each other. Think, you don't do that. Think about what you're saying. You're actually saying you're, you're excoriating Jim Buss and Mitch Kupchak 
Because the not deal, Mitch, not okay, Mitch. Jim Buss, because the deal he pulled off was so devastatingly excellent. No. He got the best player no. in the trade and saved twenty That's million. Guys, we gotta go. That we gotta he, go. That he, didn't have, not why. he didn't have the soft That's enough not touch why. with the lead. That's not what I say. Exactly. Okay, you, but that's you, a very subtle. Right, you gotta right, work right, that relationship. All right, all right, all right. Let's, save, work it. Let, let's save it. To be continued.